Hey guys, Radio Garage, back on the bench. Thanks everybody for tuning back in. Make sure you take a second to subscribe, and if you like the video, please give it a like at the end. I hope you stick around for the duration. Do appreciate it. Here's my contact. If anybody's looking uh, to get anything done, Radio Garage, gmail.com. Okay. Cobra 29 on the bench. I want to just go over quick with you guys a MOSFET conversion, how I'm doing it. Super easy very very easy five steps or less okay and let's get right into it first thing obviously you what you're gonna want to do is take out your final if you got a 2078 in there that's you know the stock on one of these um, go ahead pull it out put in your MOSFET of choice IRF 520 um, 13N10 something like that ERF 2030 they all work fine all right Second thing you're going to want to do is find R56. It's right in front of the final here. You take, remove that. It's a resistor. What goes in there is your bias circuit. Okay. It's a resistor and a diode in series. Diode is a simple 1 in 914. Resistor is a 470. That's what I used. If you're following the instructions on CB trick, something like that, they're going to show three components for the bias circuit here. The third part, what I do to make it simpler, because there's not a lot of room back there, is I tack it onto the solder side right here. There's R56. Uh, the resistor I used here was a 4.7. That's something you could play around with. You could go, I think, um, down into the threes, something like that. Depending what instructions you read, that's just I'm telling you the way I do it. I use a 4.7. All right, so that's done. Your final is replaced. Your bias circuit's in place. There's two parts. Um, the second thing you're going to want to do is remove C61. Uh, that is right in front of L14 here, okay? Right here. It's a cap down in there. Remove that. That's part two. Um, second, third thing you're going to want to do is R55 is a resistor right here. You're going to solder, take that out and solder in a 22 puff cap. All right, in its place. So depending on how you look at that, that could be two parts um, or one part because you're taking something out and putting something in. All right, and guys, that's pretty much it. You're done. Final in, bias circuit in, remove C61, remove R55, put your cap in there, you're done. Now, that's as far as in installing and removing parts. You're not done in the fact that um, you do have to retune everything now. So, like this tuning slug right here is already um, somebody has it removed this is a used radio that was already out I would normally keep that in and just retune it for um, where I need it same thing with these you know here's your tuning circuit for your RF that gets retuned obviously if you have you know some equipment like this you may see better results um, you're gonna want to use at least something that has a true peak reading if you're just tuning with the watt meter and then what you're going to want to do is come over here and set your modulation on the scope. Hopefully you have a scope. If you don't, um, I, I don't really know what to tell you um, as far as setting that. If you crank it wide open, guys, it's going to it's going to bleed like heck. It's going to look like hell on the, on a scope if it, if you ever get it on a scope. Um, I, so, anyways, that's up to you how you want to set your modulation. Obviously on the bench here. I set it for max clean audio, 100% or more if it doesn't flat top or clip. Some radios can't go more without flat topping or clipping. So anyways, that being said, um, you're done. The only other thing you're going to want to check is your gate voltage on the back. Um, it's going to be the pin over here all the way to the right. That's your gate pin. Check your voltage quick. Key it up. Check that. If it's under 4, you're good to go. If you're getting a good dead key, you're good to go. If it's somewhere like between 2, mm, I don't know, 2.5 to 4, something like that. Don't quote me on that, guys. That's ballpark, okay? 
um, then you're good to go. You're seeing a nice dead key, you know, whatever you want, three, four, five, six plus watts, and that's a good voltage between what I said, like two and a half and four, you're fine, you're done, all right? If you're seeing like one watt dead key, and you know, you're not getting a lot of swing out of it, you're gonna have to add this right here. This is an extra bias circuit. This is not in the instructions on CB Tricks or you know something like that. Another site. I don't know where you guys you know generally get your your directions for these conversions, but this here is a something little trick I picked up along the way doing my own research. It's not something I you know invented or whatever. I'm not you know creating the the wheel here. Um, this is from doing my own research. I figured out um, that. In order to get your gate voltage up, get your dead key up, you run a resistor from your gate pin over here to a uh, eight volt source, which C116 has on the positive pin of that cap. I used a 10K resistor right here. Came out beautiful. That gave me my extra voltage that I needed, my extra dead key that I needed. All right, she's done. So that's your one extra part that you may need right there. Otherwise, like I said, you're done. You don't have a bunch of, you know, I didn't, Nothing. I didn't solder anything extra on this on this solder side except for right here to complete my bias circuit, and then I needed the extra bias here. That's it. So, with that being said, I'm gonna quick show you what I got out of it doing the simple, simple MOSFET conversion. Okay. One, two, three, four, five audio. One, two, three, four, 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 five, five, five audio. Over 30 watts. 50 watt slug. Okay. And most guys would stop right there when I see these videos, you know, because let's face it, guys, we all watch videos. We all, you know, everybody's out there watching each other. Um, generally, nobody shows it on the scope, you know. I'll see a Cobra 29 get tune up, and then if they do show it, they show it on the on the scope, just talking into it, and, and the waveforms jumping all around. You can't really tell what it's doing, or they, you know, they don't slow down the waveform enough to actually be able to tell what it's doing. I always steady the waveform for you guys. You guys know that. All right. So there it is. MOSFET conversion. Beautiful, beautiful waveform. Okay. We got really nice positive round it there. And positive on the negative. Round it, round it, round it, round it. Okay. That's what you want to see. If you crank it all the way open, She's gonna shark tooth, it's gonna, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna clip and it's gonna pinch. And what I mean by that, because a lot of people I'll say, oh that's a great looking, I'll say that's a great looking waveform. And somebody's probably thinking, well, yeah, if you say so. Well no, it's not just because I say so, it's because if you look up 100 percent modulation or, or an AM modulated signal online, you'll see that's what it's supposed to look like. Alright. So, like I said, she will do more. Um, if it's cranked all the way up, but I don't suggest doing that. And I'm noticing too, also the way this is set up, the way I have it done, this thing keeps keeping it keyed up, fully modulated. Like it's not even getting warm. So um, I really like the way this came out. Nice and simple, easy conversion. If your final's blown out, you want a cheap way to replace your final because these are cheap, these MOSFETs are cheaper than your bipolar transistors. It's a good way to do it. Um, otherwise, I don't suggest just for the heck of it ripping out a perfectly good final and, and throwing one of these in. It's just not worth it, guys. If you go from 20 watts PEP, PEP, um, to 30 watts PEP, you're not gonna notice a difference. The other guy's not gonna notice a difference on the end, okay? You're really not. You gotta like, you, you gotta double your power just to see a half a half of S unit increase you got to quadruple your power to go up one S unit. So if you're already at 20, you're not going to put another S unit on a guy until 80 watts. Well, you're not going to get 80 watts out of one of these. So, you know, I don't even suggest trying to get 50 out of one of these. If you want a 50 watt radio, I suggest going to buy a 50 watt radio. Um, so I don't want somebody trying to do one of these and saying, you know, oh, I, you know, I only got X amount of power. All it is, it's not an upgrade. I don't call the MOSFET an upgrade. The MOSFET is a replacement final, it's a conversion, that's it. You know? Um, if it was really an upgrade, you'd be you'd be seeing different power gains out of it. So anyways, sorry for rambling on guys. 
Um, I think that's pretty much it. There's a couple other little things you could tweak on these things. Maybe I'll get into on another video. If anybody's interested, let me know. I'll share some more tips and tricks on these things um, to get them sounding good. And everybody, I hope you had a Merry Christmas. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Appreciate the support. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that bell. Get notified every time a new video is uploaded. And um, if you guys liked this and you, and you liked what you saw, hey, give it a thumbs up. It helps. Okay. All right, guys. We still got our keyed up. All right. Still looking really good. Came out really nice. Simple way. Simple, simple. The Radio Garage MOSFET conversion. Appreciate it. We'll see you next time. We're off the key.